Hey, usually our videos are informative and today's going to be an informative one too, but we thought we might give you a little insight into maybe some of our staff. Because we've got Sarah with us today, and Sarah started about four years ago with Southland Organics. And then about two years ago, we lost her to become a missionary down in Nicaragua. So, but if there was somebody who kind of represented what Southland is, as far as the growing sustainability and ministry, I think it would have to be Sarah of all the staff that's come through here and currently working. So, Sarah, I want you to take just a few moments and tell us about as a missionary, how are you using sustainability to help the people in Nicaragua? That's a great question, Alan. So I graduated from the University of Georgia in 2019 um, and was an accidental farmer. I was in FFA in high school, got pulled into a basic gag class, <laughs> was really just surprised by how much I resonated with farmers and their love for the land sure. and just who they are as people. Right. Um, and I went, wow, this is really cool. And I like... You guys are cool, and I want to be your friends, and I want to like I want to figure out how to do this. Farmers are cool. Farmers are cool, and then I figured out, um, as it was a long dream of mine to go abroad and to be a missionary, that a lot of people in developing countries want to be better farmers, yeah. and a lot of times they just aren't connected to the resources and the opportunities that they need to be able to be the best farmers that they can be. And right. so when I moved to Nicaragua, my hope initially was, hey, I want to take this knowledge that I've really had a gift to be able to get at the University of Georgia to learn, to be trained in leadership and sure. in agriculture and FFA and share that knowledge with these folks who maybe yeah. haven't had an opportunity to get to learn that and to mm -hmm. get to learn leadership skills and to just dig into Absolutely. the science as well of agriculture and how we can optimize it and get good yields, even if we're in less than optimal um, conditions. And so I moved down there and I was like, wow, this is so cool. Um, we're having a great time, we're farming, we're sweaty, we're gross all the time, but I, like, over the course of my first two years was like, man, there's such a need for not just tools and resources and opportunities for these farmers, but sustainability doesn't make sense outside of the context of the gospel. Right. When we talk about being good stewards, when we talk about, um, doing things that we want our kids to be able to do our grandkids yeah. and their kids and beyond sure the christian worldview is what helps make that make sense it's what motivates us because otherwise you don't care it's like right. well i'll do this it works for me i like put food on the table you Get know out. and i'm done we're good and when you bring jesus into it you're yeah. like oh but I need to be a good steward. I need to love my neighbor. I need to make this work not just for me on my farm, but for the environment yeah. around me, for the community around me. And so I kind of was seeing that come to fruition in these moments on the farm, working with these guys and seeing like, oh, this, like everything is connecting. Yeah. Um, and so the organization I'm about to move down um, back to Nicaragua to work with actually is intersecting at an even earlier time with high school and middle school students and wow. so their main ministry is discipling these kids week after week after week so they're pouring leadership skills they're pouring character development but then they have this 200 acre reserve rainforest oh, wow. coffee farm yeah um, that's up in the mountains so these are kids who have never seen the mountains other than volcanoes that could explode at any time in their backyard which is terrifying but yeah it's just a way it is what it that is. we exist but then they come and they meet friendly mountains, which yeah. are really cool. Um, and then they get a chance to experience God in nature. Wow. And our hope, right now it's just a discipleship center, but our hope and my job is going to be to expand that mission. Yeah. Um, because there's a huge interest for these kids to learn about agriculture, to learn about sustainability, and learn sure. how to steward the resources of Nicaragua because it's an incredibly, incredibly well endowed and just rich yeah. country. A lot of their resources just aren't being optimally used yeah and so we have an opportunity to intersect with these kids at moments when they need somebody to say not just stay in school but here's purpose yeah. and here is a like life-defining thing that you can do like yeah. you can get involved in agriculture you can get involved in the environment and sustainability and like find God in that as sure. well and so my job is connecting those kind of two worlds. And so teaching about the parables of Jesus and when he says, you know, like sometimes you may be pruned 
And the kids are like, <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? And you're like, well, actually today we're going to go prune some tomato plants. Nice. And then we're going to sit down and we're going to be like, okay, well, what does it look like when Jesus right. prunes us yeah. in real life? Yeah. Um, and to grow more those fruit. Two. Exactly. Yeah. And so you have this then practical skill. So these like students who spend time on the campus, whether it's a few days or it's a week or it's an internship, will walk away with real life skills and the solid connection with the gospel yeah. and with the character um, that comes with sustainability. Yeah. And so that's kind of our hope. That's our vision. That's our heart yeah. um, for Nicaragua. And it's really exciting that I get to be a part of that. Well, you know, there's no doubt Christians have, some Christians have had a hard, bad impact on necessarily the world. Mm, yeah. And we've not been a good representation of Jesus Christ. But if you look back at what Jesus did yeah. in his life, he met their physical needs first. Yeah, That was the first thing he did. He met the physical needs first. And that's what I like about what this ministry is doing. Is going, We're going to meet your physical needs. And then right. we're going to show Jesus Christ in that. Yeah. Well, um, what would probably be the hardest thing, maybe we don't resonate, but maybe just right. kind of the hardest thing right now, maybe even on the growing side or even mm. dealing with people. I don't know. What would be the number one difficult thing you deal with right down there? I mean, the first thing that jumped into my mind was everyone speaks Spanish, yeah. so I like live my life in another language, which is, it was more challenging when I first moved down there, and now sometimes I struggle to live my life in English, yeah. so that was like my first <laughs> sure. <laughs> first couple of years, I was like, how do we, how do we Spanish? I, I don't yeah. know. Um, but I would say now it's seeing, especially in adults, which is why I'm really excited that, you know, like I'm in many ways getting to return the favor that FFA gave sure. to me in high school of getting to kids in a moment when they're questioning, like, do mm -hmm. I have value? Yeah. Do I have a voice? Do I matter? Yeah. Um, that a lot of times, like, I'll interact with um, adults who have been field workers for years and years and years, and they just haven't had an opportunity to, um, to lead or to um, really grab onto new ideas and have an opportunity to, to just try new things. Right, and sure. And that's really, really hard to break that habit like yeah. once they've gotten to a place where they're like no my opinion doesn't matter my thoughts don't matter like i'm just gonna do as i'm told yeah um that's an incredibly hard habit to break sure and so and it's inviting people into the freedom of being like you can do new things you can try new things yeah. and you have a voice that mm -hmm. matters and so it's hard with high school students um but it's not as hard as intersecting with yeah. um, adults. And so I'm really excited that we have an opportunity to kind of like avoid that problem in sure. some ways of sure. like just meeting kids where they're at in that moment where they're asking the question, right. do I have a voice? And they haven't been told no yet. Sure. Um, and we get to affirm that and we get to be like, hey, this is important. And yeah. yes, there are cool, cool thoughts you can have. Well, you know, there's no more rejoicing in heaven when... An older person gets saved, but Absolutely. when you get a hold of a young life, you got a whole life now Absolutely. to deal with. So it's a it's a cool focus. Um, yeah. Well, I I want to be an encouragement to you, and um, I also wanted to let people know Sarah is actually raising money, and um, so I am not ashamed to go. Hey, check out her website. We're going to post that below, and uh, check out her ministry and it. The Lord so inclines you to maybe give. You can at least see what she's doing. But anyway, that's a little bit of insight into one of our team members. who We still consider you team because we still, still support you. In fact, team. she's on furlough right now, but yes. she's in the warehouse packing up some big old bird and some litter life. Yeah. So, so it's cool. So we're glad to have her. So, But if you've got any questions about this or you need to reach out to me for anything, you know the drill. Alan at SouthlandOrganics.com or give me a call. 1-800-608-3755. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. All right, until next time.